Here is a 2023 Infiniti QX55 in mineral black over red interior. This is the coupe design that Infiniti took away when we had the FX35. Bringing it back, it's a little late to the game, but the styling and all the amenities that you get is really what makes this a little bit more unique than the ride. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. This is going to sit down a little bit opposed to the QX50, which will be the traditional SUV. The fastback starts off with a more aggressive, deeper mesh grille, integrating into the eye-inspired LED headlights, LED fog lights, and it has more of a fashion design statement but a twist of dynamic, especially on the lower bumper where it gets a lot more aggressive than the QX50 with the more sharp hood stance than the Acura RDX and even some of the German rivals like BMW and Mercedes. Off of the QX50 platform, they both also share the same VC turbocharged 2.0 liter four cylinder with 268 horsepower, 280 pound feet of torque paired to a CVT transmission. What's the unique part though, is that you can go to an 8.1 compression ratio to get more performance or a 14.1 compression ratio to get optimal fuel as if this was a turbo four cylinder diesel giving 22 MPGs for the city and 28 MPGs for the highway. Because of the price category that this sits at when you get into the sensory, it does put the rivals at a higher price tag, meaning you could option a BMW X4 M40i, which will have over 360 horsepower. And dynamically speaking, it's gonna have a near 50-50 weight distribution, whereas this one will not. Going against the Acura RDX, that one is gonna have more horsepower, the same torque, but this one is going to be a lot more stylish because of the fastback design. And the wheel design that they come with the 20 inch dark finish, machine finish alloy wheels. And if you want it to look more sporty, just paint them black. So that way it matches the exterior color. I would probably blacken out all the chrome elements that's around the window treatment and even the door handles because it's gonna give more of a stealth look. And when you're looking for a fastback, you really want it to have all those attributes of performance. And going to a Mercedes Benz, you would be able to option the AMG package for just a few thousand dollars. So really, when you're considering luxury, that's what they're doing. Unfortunately, they're not optioning anything for the performance line other than that VC turbocharged engine, which I kind of wish that they had something like a Red Sport 400 because it looks athletic on all perimeters. Cubed LED taillights and LED brake lights. The coupe design looks a little bit more athletic because it's not so pushed up. They did a good job with the curvature and the way the configuration for the tailgate opens up because it's more so inwards. Therefore, they don't have to really do a lot to make it look as dynamic as it is. On the lower, you're getting a dual exhaust outlets, front and rear parking sensors, and a surround view camera, which is your 360 degree reverse camera. Towing is not gonna be the best. It's around 1,500 pounds. Power lift gate going into 26.9 cubic feet of storage because of the hatchback or coupe design. It sits up, does have a wide opening, and we get a 12 volt to start off with. Underneath the floor gets a storage box. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split, increasing cargo to 63.8 cubic feet, which is about 10 cubic feet less than the QX50 VC turbocharged. Let's go inside, start up so you can hear that exhaust note. way power seat adjustment for the front heated and ventilated perforated with red and black mixture memory for the driver leather appointed comes standard headroom is not going to be an issue for the 55 it does feel like it sits up a little bit more so leg space you're going to have a sufficient amount for both occupants it is a driver focused setup but i like the red and black mixture with the contrast stitching that goes all the way up onto that leatherette dashboard the wood interior with the aluminum trim that's going to wrap around it with an eight inch top screen and a seven inch lower screen. This is going to be derived for the navigation or the infinity in touch is what it's called. And the lower is going to be all of your informational settings. What I don't like 
right off the bat is you will have to use this a little bit more so because the gauge buttons that go through here for the TFT display, you will not be able to change anything for your heads up display. Everything is going to be derived in here. So you'll have to go into the settings, slide it over, get into your heads up display to adjust it. So imagine if you're driving, put it into reverse. The top screen will have the 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory for the front and the rear. You can change different camera angles, but it will only show on the passenger side. Dual climate control settings with a CD player, 16 speakers through Bose. That is optional on every single trim. Here you get two USB ports, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with a 12 volt charger. The cup holders are going to be stationed in front and you can also close this up so it looks a little bit more clean. The key fob for the QX55 and the gear lever will get the leather that's gonna be wrapped around it. I like that pattern though. It really does illustrate a sport design. And on this side is gonna be for the camera and the rotary knob for the infotainment screen. Open up inside, push the button here. It's a deep storage pocket with another USB port, but everything's really derived for the passenger side. Three spoke leather wrapped steering wheel, multi-function with the paddle shifters and the dashboard and the door panels configuring together with that wood inlays and it's very seamless. The same thing with the stitch work. So I like how they pay attention to detail. Soft materials are gonna be found everywhere. One touch up and down for all the windows. Standard UV acoustic windows. A medium sized storage pocket with a large beverage holder in the front. A standard moon roof. For the back seats, I've set the seat in the highest position so you can see what I mean. So headroom is gonna be a little bit tight and it's a bit oval. If you slide this back though, you can recline and it feels a lot more luxurious and sporty. As for leg space, it's gonna be the same. It's actually not that bad. The rear can be adjusted forward and backwards to give more cargo capacity. Storage behind both of the front seats, third climate control with heated rear seats, two USBs and air vents. This is pushed back a little bit, so it's not gonna be as utilized as it should. I wish that it had manual sunshades at least because of the price point that we're at, but it does have all soft materials, the wood inlays and the aluminum with the Bose sound system, one touch up and down, and we get a storage pocket. They can fit a beverage more or less inside. The floor is not completely flat, so you will have to lift your feet up. The rails are pushed up enough, so it's not necessarily bad, but you will be sharing some feet space, but in shoulder space, if the occupant in front puts their seat back, it's gonna be hard for three occupants to fit. The center here for headroom isn't actually too bad. I am more or less on the headliner, but this is also a coupe design, whereas on the QX50, it'll be a little bit more of a flat roof, so you have the optimal headroom. The Infiniti QX55. The VC turbocharged engine is very unique. Touch base is on it a little bit on the exterior, but it took over 20 years to design this variable compression ratio, which will alter your drive and your MPGs. It's the world's first, which Infiniti, Nissan, they like to do a lot of first things. So I like that they are very innovated in moving forward. We all kind of dislike the CVT transmission, which that was why I got rid of my QX60 and got a new QX60 because now it has a nine speed automatic transmission. The sit to this is pretty good. You do sit up pretty high, a little bit more so than I would like for the dynamic stance that I have on the exterior. And when you get the red black interior, it really keeps that sport attribute in the interior. There's not any changes from the QX50 to the 55 on the inside. Just really the front and the rear is changed a bit to make it look a little bit more aggressive in the fastback or coupe design. Going against the rivals, because this goes into the $60,000 price point, you can start entertaining more of the performance rivals, meaning BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, in which they're gonna be a lot faster. If you get the base model to this, it's gonna be a little bit less, but it's still going to be a couple grand more than the traditional SUV style of the QX50. But overall feel to it, you're not necessarily losing too much. I mean, 10 cubic feet sounds like a lot, but really it's just from top to bottom more or less. And as for headspace, it's still doable sitting in the back seats. Now we're going to see the compression ratio at that low 8.1 with this VC turbocharged engine in sport mode. Just quick. 
pushes you back pretty good. You get the same torque as the RDX, 280 pound feet. So it's not bad with that either. The exhaust note filters in a little bit more so. The RPMs on the gauge cluster really start at two because that's really when it starts to liven up. Anything under that is going to be sipping fuel at that 14.1 compression ratio. Now that's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros about the QX55. The styling, I like it. I think it is one of the better styled coupe design SUVs on the market. It just, on the con, they don't offer the performance to back it, meaning they got a sport trim but they just change exterior elements. They don't make it sporty. Some other pros about the vehicle, standard leather seats and heated front seats. When you get into the Germans, you're getting leather red instead of that. And it's tailored a little bit more sporty and elegant in the interior, even though it is starting to look a little dated, meaning the two screen setup. But if they just change that, I think the configuration will basically be right on point with anybody because you're getting everything touch screen too, which makes it a lot easier and intuitive. The cons is you do have to use that lower screen like I was showing you on the interior specs. And when you have a multi-function setup on the steering wheel, really nothing is derived to change too much there. You have to do everything in your central station here. So you're gonna be taking your eyes off the road quite a bit. Because we have physical knobs for the climate control, it does make it a little bit easier. So that definitely is a pro. It just kind of configure it a little bit easier because you just got things kind of spread out too much. Then we have two stocks, which they could have cleaned this up and put everything on the one stock. I understand it'd be a little weird to have for your windshield wipers where your turn signals are, but in the same perspective, that's the only thing it's there for is your turn signals and to turn on your high beams. So you're kind of an overkill. Maybe take the buttons that's on the driver's side away because again, you're just kind of compiling too much. Clean it up because a lot of the vehicles are starting to go that route. To see that performance? I mean, it doesn't sound like a drone, so that's good, but it doesn't necessarily sound like a V6, which is what they're trying to illustrate with that higher with that lower compression ratio. But overall feel to it with these wheels, the suspension holds itself good because it's a four-wheel independent suspension. Towing is not gonna be something that's optimal. CVT transmission to touch bases on that. When you buy these vehicles, you really do need to service them every 30,000 miles, meaning to just drain the fluid and put new fluid in it. Because if not, it's going to go bad a lot quicker. I personally had my QX60 for about nine years and around 170,000 miles. Never had any issues with the CVT transmission. It's just because of the higher miles, I was getting a little tired of it. And they finally came out with a nine speed automatic transmission where they finally put it on the QX60. So I waited a year and I got the 23 model. And because the price does go into the $60,000 price point, it really does open up a lot of different vehicle options in which you get the performance but it's not going to be as soft as this suspension when it comes to luxury and also the amenities that you get you will start paying a lot more so even though it's a few thousand dollars more to get those variants in order to spec it out similar to this it's still going to increase another five or ten thousand dollars depending on the features you put for the exterior and the interior so the value is definitely there with the exterior and interior styling Really, it just depends on if you're looking for a traditional SUV to have more of the box and get a little bit more cargo or to just go into the coupe so you got that fastback design and it illustrates more of the dynamics of Infinity. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Infinity at Clearwater for giving us this 2023 Infinity QX55 Sensory for our car review.